What's going on OmniBuddies, Mitch here, and today we are doing another OmniBuddy overview. What are we looking at? Well, what are we talking about today? We are talking about Jeff Lemire's and Andrea Sorrentino's latest drops. We are talking about two books, 10,000 Black Feathers and The Passageway. All right, so these two books, uh, this is the latest drop, uh, volume two, I guess you could call it, in the Bone Orchard Mythos, which is this expansive uh, overarching universe that kind of sort of ties all these books together or kind of will tie them together. Uh, as you look at these books, and you know what, in this overview, if you're expecting to find out how these books tie together, you're gonna be very disappointed because I do not like spoilers or anything like that. I try and stay away from them as much as possible. So uh, you don't have to worry about spoilers in this, uh, but they do tie together and you know what, maybe not super tightly, but they do tie together uh, at the end and you kind of figure out how they begin to tie together. And I'm very excited to see <laughs> how these continue to tie together. But uh, Passageway came out uh, last year as of the making of this video in 2022, I believe it was something like that, end of last year. Uh, and then 10,000 Black Feathers just came out uh, about a mm, two, uh, few weeks ago, maybe a month ago, something like that. Uh, but they are about the same size, as you can see. We'll kind of compare them a little bit later. But uh, these come to us from Image. And honestly, Jeff Lemire is one of my absolute favorite creators. He wrote some of my favorite books like Essex County and Underwater Welder freaking phenomenal books. Uh, Lemire is just on a whole other level uh, when it comes to storytelling and I I freaking love his art too. So I'm always disappointed when he's not on art, uh, when he doesn't like do his own, his own books, doesn't, uh, you know, when he's just the writer and he's not the artist on it. But you know what, Andrea Sorrentino's art and Dave Stewart's colors are chef's kiss so good all right you know what i'm just i'm just talking and blathering now and just joining it on let's take a closer look at these books all right so here we have the two hard covers the passageway and Ten Thousand black feathers and i will say uh to start things off real quick there was a free comic book day uh prelude to uh the passageway or really bone orchard mythos it was from, I believe, 2022, so it's over a year old, uh, but uh, you can should be able to find it. I think you can actually find it for free. I believe I remember uh, Andrea Sorrentino uh, posting about a free PDF download for the Prelude, so you could find that out. But I keep mine tucked nice and safely. Not the greatest for the binding, but tucked nice and safely in there. So these are the two hardcovers. They are not oversized hardcovers. They are, here we have an oversized hardcover, Royal City, also by Jeff Lemire. But you can see um, just scale-wise how big they are. Obviously, uh, they're more of that premier hardcover format. If you're familiar with premier hardcover, oversized hardcover, deluxe hardcover, same thing, deluxe and oversized hardcover generally generally um but yeah so that's uh size wise you can see um uh thickness how thick they are but yeah so not super thick uh took me about mm, maybe an hour hour and a half to read through passageway and a solid hour and a half maybe i'm a slow reader to read through black feathers uh, Ten Thousand black feathers because it is a little bit thicker so we can kind of get that in focus there so yeah, there's the spines. This is by Image. Um, the Passageway retails for 18 bucks, and um, 10,000 Black Feathers retails for 20. Um, probably a little bit of inflation, but more. It's you know a little bit thicker, so two bucks more. You know, there you go. Uh, but yeah, so let's get into it. This is the. Uh, both of these are a part of the Bone Orchard mythos which means they're kind of in this uh this mythos this universe that um, is interconnected in 
many, maybe not so many ways, uh, but it is interconnected. We'll get rid of black feathers for now. We'll take a closer look at the passageway. Here's the back. And it is uh, definitely in the horror mystery genre, but uh, not. it's more creepy than it is anything. But uh, take a quick look at this free comic book day, Bone Orchard Mythos, which is very much a prelude to some of the stuff going on in, uh, in, in the passageway. So I won't go too much into that. It kind of gives a little bit of a ish backstory, but, um, very cool. It definitely is worth hunting down and checking out if you can. Um, but it doesn't take away anything from this, the Bone Orchard mythos. It only adds. Um, so if you can't find it or can't get that PDF download, definitely uh, don't don't stop yourself from reading it. I read the passageway first and then went and read that. And it was, I'd actually recommend doing it that way too. Uh, read passageway first, then go the free comic book day prelude, and then go back or go, move on to 10,000 Black Feathers. So again, this is uh, published by Image. It's uh, Jeff Lemire on story, Andrea Sorrentino on art, David Stewart on color, on colors, uh, Steve Wan's letter and design, and Greg Lockard is the editor. Uh, and this kind of kicks off, it definitely has that creepy vibe where it is uh, a lighthouse. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so some dude is going to a lighthouse and he's got to uh, check things out and see what's going on. And he immediately meets, uh, yeah, he immediately meets a creepy lady. And if that, yeah, so, <laughs> uh, yeah, he, he goes out there and he's investigating a giant hole in the ground. Well, not a giant, like, Withwise, but it goes on for only God or I guess the devil knows how deep. Um, but he is there to investigate and find out what's going on, and very quickly, all hell sorts sort of uh, breaks loose. You know, he's trying to use technology to discover what's going on with a drone, and then you know, uh, uh, doesn't. Uh, doesn't exactly work out so well and so he has to you know stay the night obviously because it's a creepy place and that's when it gets super creepy uh, <laughs> I mean come on come on check that out crows and bleeding eyes and little little children calling for mom like come on seriously does it get much creepier than that uh, but I will say, story-wise, it's obviously short, so it scoots along really quickly. Um, I'm already halfway through the book, and I'm feeling like at this point I can't say much more without giving away too much. And dang, the story's so good. It's intriguing. It's uh, creepy. It's well-paced. The dialogue isn't clunky or anything like that. It is, uh, in my opinion... Uh, some very much uh, peak Lemire, and along with peak Lemire, we have peak Andrea Sorrentino. His art is so good. I mean, he fits this very subtle detail into the faces, into their emotions, um, where, you know, at first glance, you're just like, oh, that's kind of a blocky face, but then you start looking at it, and this is where I really, really want them to do an oversized hardcover, because the more you get in on this detail, like on this face, you really start to pick up a lot more subtlety in uh, Sorrentino's art. And just, I mean, at first you're just like, oh, it's a broken, broken uh, piece of pane of glass in the, in the lighthouse. But then you start seeing all those ripples and all that stuff and just a lot, a lot of really good um, detail in there. And you know what, I can't really get too much into anything else here but dang i mean look at sorrentino's art just these thick uh gothic art deco kind of i don't know if art deco is really the the right term for it maybe it is but this 
really thick gothic look to it. Uh, really, really beautiful and haunting. And I don't want to show too much of it at the end. So um, we will just kind of go into <laughs> after that. I will say the page quality is really good. Um, not sure if you can see uh, through it or not. I've started trying to do a little bit more uh, light testing. So you can kind of see straight through it with obviously with the light behind it. But I mean, it's, you know, with the light behind it, you can see through the pages. And that's a really, really prime example of like black and white on one page and then black and white on the opposite page you can see through but without a light shining through it, you're not seeing much through that page. Um, I'm seeing a little bit through here, but page quality is great, I think, in my opinion. And the, um, uh, I love the, the um, finish on it. It's not totally matte. It's not like this high gloss feel or anything like that. So it's got a really nice look to it with Sorrentino's thick, lines and uh, Stewart's really thick colors too. I mean, obviously he doesn't use a lot of color in some of this, which is, I think, a really talented uh, and uh, bold colorist is to not be tempted to, you know, you're always tempted, you're the colorist, throw color on there. But I mean, uh, look at that. Like he didn't put much color in there, but the color he did, it like adds the sickening greenish yellow. Really good job very crisp, adds color where color is needed, but lets the black and white, those thick lines speak for themselves. Um, so great job by Sorrentino and Stewart. And um, yeah, and obviously Lemire. And you have some uh, stuff here about the creators. And then that's really it. Talking about Gideon Falls, which is obviously more horror from Lemire and Sorrentino. Um, now I'm kind of wondering if it's going to tie into Gideon Falls somehow. That would be super cool. Uh, I love Gideon Falls. Um, I have more. Uh, I have an overview on Gideon Falls if you are interested in Volume 1. Volume 2 I'm saving for my Spooktober event this coming fall. So if you're watching this way later on um, in you know fall of 2023, you might be able to get my Volume 2 overview. But um, excuse me. Uh, 10,000 Black Feathers uh, doesn't really pick up where it left off because <laughs> uh, they're two totally separate stories um, by same creators, Lemire Sorrentino, Stewart on Colors, uh, Wands on Lettering, um, and Lockard on Editing. So um, I believe that's five chapters. And this one was super interesting in that... Uh, uh, if you've been following my channel for a while, you know I do, I play D&D, &D, I dabble in D&D, &D, and so whenever books uh, also talk D&D &D and kind of RPG role-playing games like that, it uh, does definitely pique my interest, and so uh, like my overview on Die by Kieran Gillen, uh, that one was very heavy into the... Uh, um, D and D type aspects. So this is two girls who are uh, meeting. Uh, one who doesn't really have much of a home in the uh, foster kids and care system, and uh, meeting another friend who you know they befriend each other in school, and um, yeah, thing things happen. <laughs> Uh, but it kind of jumps back and forth between um, present day, um, probably like when the passageway is taking place, and uh, uh, past where, you know, it's going through where they meet. And it does definitely flip from uh, art style, a um, lot of like, f almost like finer details and wispier finer details in the past, and then those thick, gothic, uh, more muted tones, colors in the present day. Um, so it de definitely does uh, jump back and forth and gives you that artistic cue on which you are in, in past or present, and goes into this relationship of these two girls and the mother and uh, how their relation, how they met, their relationship, you know, a pact is made, a world is born. 
and they kind of get into the world of D&D and, you know, chilling in the basement and making up characters and plot lines and whole worlds. Uh, just absolutely love that. Um, just being kids being super creative. And then all of a sudden it flashes back to present day where one of the girls is uh, maybe losing her mind a little bit and definitely does not disappoint in the mystery and the creepy factor. I would say that this one actually has uh, less creep factor uh, as I flipped this kind of a page, <laughs> but it has less creep factor overall than the passageway, but it definitely has more to the story, more characters, more dialogue, more relationship building, that is for sure. The passageway acted in it of itself as almost a prelude to this the Bone Orchard mythos. Um, in my mind, I know there's that prelude free comic book day, but uh, this is definitely in my mind where it really kicks in and begins to kick into high gear. Um, trying to flip through pretty quickly um, to not show too much of what happens, but um, a lot of this plays with, are we losing our minds? Are we, you know, getting too far into uh, this world? Um, and where does imagination and reality meet? And are they separate or are they together? And yeah, so it definitely dips into that um, and has a lot more uh, family and uh, familial bonds uh, that it touches on, which is very cool. I love seeing more characterization and more story and plot line that way. Um, and then this one also has, uh, but uh, Passageway has a little bit more, not Passageway, sorry, uh, 10,000 Black Feathers has some extras in it, which is super cool. It's got this variant cover, cover gallery, a um, lot of skulls, a lot of death, a um, lot of creep, creepiness, um, but very cool art, Dustin Nguyen, Martin Simmons, uh, yeah, so it's got some really cool, really cool stuff in here. Ooh, I didn't notice this one, the Spawn uh, crossover with uh, Andre Sorrentino and Stewart on that one. Super cool stuff in here. Ooh, Yoko Shimizu, that's a really nice one. I really like that. Uh, yeah, some really cool art in here. So this is a nice cover gallery. And then again, about the creators and, uh, you know, offering up, hit up the passageway and Gideon Falls and all that kind of stuff too. And then, uh, yeah, that is the end of that. So we'll get these both out here, uh, 10,000, the passageway and 10,000 black feathers. Really great stuff. We'll pull this, uh, oh, it's down here. There it is, found it. Uh, that is the totality of the Bone Orchard Mythos. So far, I would say that if you're gonna read it in any chronological-ish order, uh, or my recommended reading order would be The Passageway, Bone Orchard Mythos Prelude, and then 10,000 Black Feathers, and then Volume 3 when that comes out later this year. All right, so that was a closer look at the first two volumes in the Bone Orchard Mythos, The Passageway, and 10,000 Black Feathers. Again, I, I really hope that they collect these into, well, I'm gonna be sad because I'm gonna to have to double dip, but I really hope that they collect this entire series into some nice oversized hardcovers. Image does a phenomenal job with that. So these are obviously a little bit smaller than the uh, typical image hardcovers. They're just kind of a smaller size, uh, not that oversized. So uh, Sorrentino's art and Lemire's story definitely deserves that giant oversized hardcover treatment. And if they can bring these all together in one or two, however long it ends up being, uh, hardcover, volume hardcovers, that would be amazing. But yeah, anyways, I freaking love these books. I pumped, uh, I got through Passageway probably in a couple sittings and 10,000 Black Feathers I got through in a single day. 
I did a couple different uh, reading sessions, but you know, like within maybe maybe just over an hour, I was able to get through that one. And Black Feather, sorry, my fan is really squeaky. Uh, <laughs> uh, Ten Thousand Black Feathers is a little bit longer than Passageway, but they're both about the same size. You can get through them in one decent sitting. Uh, so. Uh, pretty quick, but again, they're pretty cheap too. So you cannot beat that, especially if you're hitting up places like organic price books, using code Omnibuddy for two bucks off every order. Or if you're buying three or more books, hey, you can buy these two books and pre-order the third one coming out, uh, I believe in the fall, something like that. Uh, you can pre-order them and then all three could come together uh, and you could use code Omnibuddy, ship it together for 5% off your entire order of three or more books. Or you could just order these two and a third book and uh, then wait and pre-order for something else. Anyways, uh, you support the channel, support OPB, Organic Price Books is super good. They ship fast, they're great communicators, their shipping packaging is next to none. Phenomenal. So you can't go wrong with it. And uh, their prices, once you use those codes and uh, some of the states don't have taxes charged, so, uh, once all that kind of shakes out, you're not going to uh, be paying much more, if any, than any other place in the country. Uh, phenomenal pricing. Anyways, uh, that's it. I'm hopefully going to be doing, I'll, I'll, I'll do an overview of the third volume when it comes out, obviously, uh, probably for maybe more of a Spooktober event, but uh, had to get these two done just because they're so freaking good. Absolutely loved them. Uh, definitely, definitely check them out. But yeah, that's it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell for notification, do all those things. But the most important thing to do is comment. I love talking with you all. Uh, these are kind of a mystery horror genre books. So let me know in the comments what your favorite uh, kind of a mystery horror book is, what, what your favorite one is. Uh, or maybe you know of a good one, maybe it's not your favorite, but of a really good one that is often not talked about let me know in the comments i love finding these hidden gems that people aren't talking about enough and i know lemire and these books are pretty well known but i don't see a lot of people talking about them enough uh so let me know in the comments what i should be talking about with these uh little talked about seemingly talked about titles all right that's it i'll let you go take care stay cool